buying a mobile home is one alternative to the standard conforming life. So if you're looking to live a downsized life and you want to minimize your expenses, uh, specifically surrounding your housing expense, uh, because your housing expense is right there with one of the top uh, recurring costs in your life, people look at mobile homes. Uh, mobile homes, RVs, and tiny homes are all part of a little niche that are outside the standard single family or townhome type of house. So in the past few years, I've been looking at alternative ways of um, housing uh, to see if I could uh, minimize my expenses and add some stability. So when I grew up, I grew up in New Jersey, mobile homes uh, in the areas I were living were not really um, around much. Uh, so as I started to travel up and down the East Coast and go further south in America, mobile homes uh, were more standard, some in a bad community, uh, some in nice communities. Like in Florida, I found that there's a lot of mobile homes in nice communities, but they come with certain restrictions that you need to be aware of. So number one, the number one thing that you'll see when you're shopping uh, for a tiny house or mobile home is in the real estate listing, they will usually put in all caps and quotation marks that you own the land. The reason they say that is because when you're thinking of buying a mobile home or tiny house uh, within a community that's um, zoned for that type of housing, you have to, the first question you have to ask is, do you own the land or is it a land lease? Uh, many times what you'll see is like there's a mobile home or a tiny house for sale for twenty or $30,000. So you say, wow, that's cheap, that's great. Uh, what's the catch? The catch is usually you don't own the land and that the there's a lot lease that you have to pay every month. On average, it usually averages between $600 to $900 a month, uh, a rent payment. Pretty much it's a rent payment that you have to pay. Your house will not appreciate that much, and mobile homes are already almost like a depreciating asset. They're not as um, valuable as a single family. And if you're in a, a land lease community where you don't own the land, yes, you won't pay property taxes, but there's that one lot lease of six to nine hundred dollars per month or more depending on the area that yet that'll include like um it's like a big hoa payment that will include your you know you won't pay taxes you won't pay uh sometimes sewer you won't pay for trash removal you won't pay for common maintenance but you'll pay for that common lot lease now when you find a mobile home in a community that you own the land then you will usually just have to pay a hoa fee the HOA fee will usually be between two to three hundred dollars per month, so at least half of what a lot lease will be. Um, but you may be liable for more things uh, regarding maintenance, uh, etc. Uh, but your the value of what you're buying is the land. Uh, when you buy a mobile home, it's really not that valuable. It's very similar to an RV or even a tiny house that it's not going to appreciate, and sometimes they do depreciate. Uh, in value rather fast. So when you when you buy a piece of property that you could put a mobile home, it's zoned for that with the township, then if you own the land, you have more equity and you tend to have a higher appreciating asset and you have more freedoms and liberties on what you can do with the land, uh, but you're probably still going to be tied in an HOA possibly, not all the time. So that's one key thing that if you are someone that's looking, specifically in America, if you're looking for an alternative way uh, to live with regards to housing and cutting your cost, and you've been interested maybe in a mobile home, one is realize it's not a, a great asset as far as housing. It's It could be a depreciating asset. And two is the key component is do you own the land or is it a lot lease? Do you own the land or is it a lot lease? Uh, stay away from lot leases, in my opinion. Uh, if you own the land, you have almost everything that comes with home ownership. Uh, you have property taxes. You may have an HOA. Uh, you'll have utility bills more than likely, etc. So 
with everything, there's a give and take, but I really don't like lot leases. You might as well just rent an apartment, in my opinion. Um, but that's kind of what I kind of found in my journey. And again, I have found, you know, there's some places that are undesirable, like some like trailer parks that are undesirable to even do that. Uh, there are some nicer communities uh, that are desirable, uh, especially, like I say, in Florida, I was surprised that there are some really nice uh, mobile homes. Um, but you're really, you know, even though they call it a mobile home, you really need like a tractor trailer to move it. It's not really that mobile. Uh, so it's a very deceiving, um, very deceiving title for that house. Because to me, if you want to be mobile, stay in an RV. Uh, and if you want to be stationary, if you find the area that you like the most and you don't want to travel much, and if you don't want to go to a house or a condo, look at the mobile or tiny houses, but stay away from the lot leases uh, because you're pretty much renting uh, and you're spending the twenty or 30000 to buy the mobile home or tiny home and you still have a rent payment and you don't have a really good appreciating asset. You kind of have like a depreciating asset. So it's a kind of a no wind if you don't own the land. Uh, but of course, if you own the land, the mobile home is probably going to be double, triple, or even quadruple in price. So again, they, it all balances out, you know, and that's what you have to realize that they're not really giving anything out for free. And that's why I've always defaulted to being a nomad and living on the road because there's less entanglements. And I'm not against someone putting down roots, but you have to really be intentional. You have to really do your research. You have to really know the area, know the restrictions in the community. Because it's easy to get into something, it's hard to get out. And a lot of people make that one critical mistake, and I've almost been there in life too, where you commit too heavy, and then you're stuck in that situation for years. Uh, and you just waste years of your life, and it's, uh, to me, it was a relief when I sold my house, and it was a burden when I bought my house. You know, there was blessings in between, but now, as I would look at purchasing something else I do a lot of research and I always default to buying nothing uh, because to me especially as a single person why rush to buy something um, you don't need to you don't need to you know so uh, but something in our mind we always want to settle and then sometimes when we settle we always want something different the grass is always greener but hopefully this video helped you in some way if it did I appreciate it if you click the thumbs up and also you'll see a blue join button if you like to join my uh, channel uh, every week I'll do membership only live chats where we can interact live and every day on this channel I go live so even if you didn't want to do that just subscribe check out my playlist on the nomad simple living I'll see you guys in the next video have a great day peace and love